This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted today to be joined with Eddie Hearn. How's things, mate? How did you? Look, look at the swag on the boy, the bounce on the boy. I mean, you're, just, you're gleaming today <laughs> after that little big up yesterday. I mean, your cred must be on another level. All of a sudden, you've got a bit of swag about you. Do you know what I mean? Mate, Parsons, what's Parsons saying? Mate. I'll tell you what Parsons is saying. You know, you know, I wished you a happy birthday. Yeah. He messaged me saying, oh, is it Eddie's birthday today? Mate, he didn't even know. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm disgusted. He's gone. He's swanning around in his uh, Marbella or wherever it is, Mediterranean apartment, villa. I mean, who gives you the right to have a holiday when there's a show? You don't see me going on fucking holiday when we've got a show, do we? No. You know, he's, he's missed the opportunity. As far as I'm concerned, he's out. You know, uh, listen, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I'll take that opportunity with both fans, but I think he is, you know, he's, uh, he's going to have it right off in America in a couple of weeks. Is he right, yeah. Well, you know, Sonny Edwards on the scales today. How do you sort of think he looks facing off the final face of each other? Great. I mean, Sonny's never going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but at the same time, he's in great shape for Sonny Edwards. I think he's prepared diligently. He wants to put on a show. It's a big night for his career. Big platform, big arena. Tough fight. I think, you know, I like Campos. I think he's going to come with everything. Um, but I expect Sonny Edwards to shine and make a real statement tomorrow night. Will Bam Rodriguez be there in the end? He won't be there, no, but we're negotiating with him at the moment and uh, I do expect to make that fight November, December. One thing Sonny Edwards said yesterday in an interview, he said, sort of said to me, it was about, you know, now he's with Matchroom, we can see he was really not taking the fight. You saw the back and forth of Martinez, talked about sort of Mexico City last year. Will it now prove, now he's on this side, that the big fight's 100% happening with him? I think so. I mean, look, Sonny signed a contract for all those fights, for the money and everything. So he's in. And I love it when we do those kind of deals, when you've got that kind of hunger from a fighter where he says, you don't even, I don't even have to speak to him. I just have to go back and go, done, Jesse Rodriguez, November to whatever at that venue. He'd go, thank you very much. So it's really down to Rodriguez, Martinez and Delakian. It has to be one of them next. But he's got to get through Campos first. But you know, he needs to unify. And if I'm saying he's the best fighter in the division, potentially, you've got to give him the opportunity to show it. Would there be any interest in signing someone like Delakian for that potential undisputed? To Frank, well, I don't know, he was on a Queensbury show before, yeah, but he's got nowhere to go unless he's in that mix. So, yeah, we'd love to work with him. Moving on, I know we sort of touched on it yesterday about the Frank Warren comments, but one thing I sort of didn't ask you, from all these comments, when you look at it, you said it was desperation, but do you feel like this is desperation where they've sort of run out of people to fight, so let's call out AJ. Do you look at it as a PR move then? I just think they don't really know what to do. Like... You've gone full circle. So it's this is your opportunity, AJ. This is at the end of last year. If you don't take this opportunity, I will never fight you. You'll never get this chance again, right? And then six months later, the AJ hasn't even been mentioned. And then all of a sudden, he's fighting Jay Apatia, Dempsey McKean, and John Jones in like the space of 48 hours. And then full circles to AJ out of nowhere after saying like, you know, you're a bum. You're never going to get this chance. Now I'll fight you again. So it's like. And also, when I spoke to George Warren, we both agreed we weren't going to say anything. Right? We weren't going to go out, start doing interviews, bad mouthing people, because it's just going to set us back. And then straight away, Tyson Fury came out and posted it all over Instagram that we were talking like. So I don't know. But and then, then that interview came out, and like, you just I've just learned over time that interviews like that just take your chance away to be sensible and make the fight because. That older generation, and I, and, you know, and I said yesterday, my old man included, so people don't think I'm just being like boss. They find it very, like I've had arguments with my dad where I've given fighters opportunities that he feel have disrespected us, right? And we shouldn't be working with him anymore. And I say, no, I think it's a good fight. I think it's a good fight for the show. Well, I fucking wouldn't have And that's the same, that Frank's the same. Another thing, you, you, you can't have a sensible conversation when they're in that mood. I mean, if you can't see that, you and the view that you think that in that mood, I could go, having never really, well, never met Frank before, sit down with him and have a sensible conversation. His head's gone completely. But George, different, and they should really let. That's why now, when my old man's at a show and you boys are going up to him and cooing, oh Barry, can we get a few words? I go, no, no. Get in the car and go home. And that's what George needs to say to Frank. Stop it. Like, Dad, please, let me let me get on with it. Because for the first time, we've actually got a line of communication where we've got potential to make fights. I was literally just about to ask you that. You and George are now talking. Obviously, I don't know what your, your, what your relationship is like, but is it beneficial that 
you know, these fights could be made where you want to work with each other, where you're actually talking to each other, and there's a relationship to be had potentially there. Of course, and I don't know, the re- in terms of relationship, I don't think either of us care. If you say, do you like George Warren? Oh, seems all right, yeah. Never, like, I've had a couple of coffees with him. I'm not thinking about going to the cinema or anything like that, but he don't care. Like, if you asked him, do you like Eddie Ernie? He'd probably go, oh, well, not, not really, but it doesn't matter. Look at Aram, like Aram's like like that. So I just feel like, you know, we made John Ryder against Zach Parker. We made Zile Zhang against Joyce. We're talking, or we've talked about AJ Fury. We're talking about Fabio Wardley against Adelaide. We talked previously about Boatsy and Yard. So, and I've never had one conversation with Frank Mike. And I've promoted for 12 years. So it has to be a positive. But things like that, just throw it back. You know, and I've always been accused of, oh, I don't don't want to work with Frank Warren. No problem working with Chris Green. But when you see interviews like that, you just think, fuck me, this is, might as well just swerve it. Absolutely, and sort of staying on the topic of uh, relationship with promoters, you've done an interview with Charlie last week talking about the De La Hoya and Ryan Garcia situation that you predicted that it was sort of getting out of hand. We saw it get way out of hand on Twitter. How disappointing is it to see where you see promoters sort of arguing with their you know, cash cow to the big stuff? Can you imagine me? having a Twitter spat with Anthony Joshua, telling him to, like, whatever he said, uh, stop moaning or something like that. I was fucking mental. But the problem is with Oscar De La Hoya, and I think, and I don't actually, I do blame him, but I understand in a respect, this is a legend. Like, this is an unbelievable fighter. So he thinks he's much better than Ryan Garcia. Like, he think, he probably still thinks he beat him now. Whereas I just respect the, I think these, like, Joshua's a superstar, he's unbelievable. One of my favorite fighters. I'm, I'm in awe of him, really. Whereas De La Hoya thinks he's bigger than, than Ryan Garcia. And he thinks he's bigger than Canelo. Or I, I was more popular than you. I mean, so it's like they butt heads and he thinks, you know, it's just, it's mad, it's mad. Because that relationship is fractured now. And I only see it going one way. So staying on the topic also of American sort of schedule. Big American schedule coming up for a matchroom of a lot of shows. Starting off next week with Regis Progre. When you look at the 140 pound division of how stacked it is with talent, you talked about the name of Devin Haney potentially joining that as well and working with him again. How good is it that now where you see 140, where you see a stacked division where there's so many good fights to be made, including Progre holding sort of all the cards? Yeah, I think it was important for us to get a foothold at 140 pounds. We got a foothold with, I think, the best 140 pounder at the moment in Regis Progre. He'll fight anyone. He wants to fight Devin Haney. He'll fight Jack Catterall. He'll fight Matthias, he'll fight Josh Tate, like whoever, he doesn't, he doesn't mind. So I want him to go and put a great performance together next week in New Orleans. And then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be pushing the Jack Catchell fight, but obviously if we get a chance to make a Haney fight, we'll look at that too. Would it be good to sort of work with Haney again after previously working with him before? Listen, we've got a great relationship. And he never wanted to leave, but I couldn't get him that fight and he had to take it and we respect that. And if there's a way to bring him back, I think he'd like to and we would too. Just literally just the last one from me. See David Adelaide fight tonight. Could we potentially see him mandate for the British title against yeah, Fabio Wardley? I think it's a great fight. I, lo- I love David Adelaide against Fabio Wardley. Really good fight. Obviously, Joe Joyce was a, uh, Fraser Clark was a great fight, but he chose to pull out the fight and not accept that fight. I don't believe Adelaide will pull out the fight, and I think I hope that gets ordered. Could you ever see yourself working with sort of Fraser Clark again potentially? Uh, yeah, yeah he's, Fraser's a good fighter. He just got mugged off. Eddie, thank you for your time. I appreciate the, the words at the start, mate. Put, put a good smile on the week. Thanks, mate.